this is going to be the third and final roller coaster question video that I do. And in the other two, basically what we've done is either start the roller coaster at rest up here, or started it with a bit of motion, and then answered for the points C, B, A, and even D, either some or all of these values, the velocity, the centripetal acceleration, the net centripetal force, and the normal force. What I'm going to do in this question is rephrase or reset up the question and say the roller coaster cart does not start this time at 45 meters. What the engineers or the roller coaster designers do is they start the cart at a slightly lower point on the track there, so at a slightly different height, some mystery height here. And what they find is that when they start the cart at this particular height, the occupants report at B, they feel weightless. And our end goal was to find which height they must have started that roller coaster cart from in order to feel weightless. Think about it conceptually for a second. The higher you start this cart, the faster it's going to be going when it passes B. And if you're on a really fast roller coaster like that, you are going to be pressed down into your seat. You're going to feel like you're being pushed into your seat. That means the normal force acting on you is large. If we start the roller coaster down here, well, it's not even going to make it to B. But if we start it at exactly the right height, it's just going to make it past B without stopping. And that's also the point where you feel weightless. So we're going to find uh, V, A, C, this and this at B, then A, then the mystery height. So we'll start at B. Let's draw a little diagram of what's actually happening at B. So we're looking at this section of the track. We've got the cart sitting here. It's got weight force, 2,000 newtons going down. And the occupants feel weightless, which also means the cart is technically weightless on the track there. Those two things go together. So the occupants feel weightless. Uh, the people in the cart feel weightless. They're not actually weightless. They still have the weight force acting on them. What they're really saying is that the normal force is equal to zero. So if the normal force is equal to zero, we only have one force here contributing to our net centripetal force because the cart, as we said, is still moving in that circle there. So in this case, the net centripetal force is actually equal to the gravity force there. So net centripetal force B is equal to 2,000 newtons. So before we'd solve V, then we'd solve net centripetal force. In this case, we solve the net centripetal force, and then we're going to solve for V. So the normal force is, normal force is 0, net centripetal force is 2,000, net centripetal acceleration, well, F equals MA. So if we divide this by M, we should get A. So dividing 2,000 by 200, since this card still has mass 200, we get AC is equal to 10. Now these are all out of order. I'll just move this down here and this up here to reflect the order in which we're actually finding them. So notice you're weightless when you're accelerating towards the middle of the circle at 10 meters per second squared, when you're at the top of the roller coaster there. We can now find V because AC is V squared on R. So 10 is equal to V squared on R was equal to 10. So V squared equals 100, V equals 10 meters per second. That's really convenient. So if you want your car to be weightless at B, the speed here has to be no more and no less than 10 meters per second. Actually, you could have less because then the roller coaster would fall off the track like that and falling 
you are still weightless. So we'll say weightless but still on track to distinguish between people who actually fall out of their seats and die a horrible death. Let's figure out the speed at A. We're talking about energy now. As you drop from B to A, there is a change in gravitational potential energy. That's equal to mg delta h, 200 times 10 times negative 20, negative 40,000 joules. If you're losing 40,000 joules of gravitational potential energy and there's no friction, it's becoming kinetic energy. So positive 40,000 is equal to the change in kinetic energy. How much is the initial kinetic energy at B? That would be a half 200 times V squared. That's 100 times 100 or 10,000 joules. So by the time he reaches the bottom here, the kinetic energy at A is equal to the kinetic energy at B plus 40,000. So this is 10,000, that's 40,000. At A you have 50,000 joules worth of kinetic energy. Let's work out now the speed at A. If we have 50,000 joules worth of kinetic energy at A, that's equal to a half times 200 times V squared. 50,000 divided by a half uh, divided by 200 then take the square root of that answer that's the square root of 500 I get 22.36 meters per second that's the speed at A. Now let's find the centripetal acceleration at A. AC at A is equal to V squared on R that is 500 on 10 or 50 meters per second squared and the net force is equal to M centripetal acceler uh, acceleration so that's 200 times 50 which is equal to 10,000 so we have a net force of 10,000 acting on the cart at A. Let's draw our section of track. So we get our circle up, draw the track here, pop in our cart, draw the net force, that's 10,000, that's the force we know must be acting on it, the sum of the forces, and then drawing the other forces. Gravity, 2,000 newtons. The normal force, which way does the normal force have to be acting to result in that force there? If we put the normal force down here, the net force is going to be way down like that. So we've got to put the normal force up here. If the normal force is tiny, the net force is still going to point down. So we've got to make that normal force really big. The normal force take away 2000 is equal to the net force so the normal force is equal to 12,000 newtons which is 6g, you'll feel 6g on your on the whatever's holding you up. Now we've solved V, uh, A, net force and N, all of those at point A, we can figure out this mystery height here. When they started it, they didn't start it from a roll, so the initial speed was zero. They just put it there and then let it roll down. Since its initial speed is zero, the kinetic energy at this point is zero, but the gravitational potential energy is equal to 200 times 10 times the mystery h. So that's 2000 h. If we go back in time, we'll see all the kinetic energy it had at A was gained on the way down here. And all of that kinetic energy that was gained was equal to 2000 times h. So what we can say is that the ug at, well, we'll just say this is s, at s, is equal to the kinetic energy at A, because all the gravitational potential energy became kinetic energy. UGS 
is equal to 2000 H, so we're just saying UG at S there, not UG times S. So that is equal to, what is the kinetic energy at A? 50,000 joules. So if we divide 50,000 by 2000, we get 25 H is equal to 25 meters. Is this a sensible answer? Well, if we had an H that was less than 20 meters, so H that started down here, we would not expect the cart to be able to make it to the top of that loop there, and we found it did make it to the top of that loop. If we had the cart start exactly at 20 meters, we'd expect it to make it to this part of the loop, but with speed zero, which would cause it to drop straight off like that. In actual fact, it would mo look more like this, roll back down. Actually, what would happen? It would go... Uh, hard to say, hard to say. But if we start it from higher than 20 metres, it will go around that loop with some speed, which we do need to keep it moving in that circle. And I've decided if we start it from 20, I think it would look something like that there. Crash. Um, so that's that question solved. Starting from... Just a few bits of information, weightless and still on track. We managed to solve for the cart's position, uh, f sorry, solve for the cart's values at a few other points on the track. And it all comes down to the fact that any energy it loses in kinetic energy is gained in gravitational potential and vice.